Okay, in this particular lesson, what we're going to be looking at is an introduction to graphing reciprocal functions. Uh, just before we do that, we need to review what a reciprocal is. Uh, the reciprocal, the technical definition of reciprocal, is that the product of a value and its reciprocal, so when I multiply any value and its reciprocal, uh, the product is always 1. So for example, uh, 2 over 1 times 1 over 2 is has a product of 1 when you simplify it. Same thing as 3 fifths times 5 thirds, that reduces, or the product simplified product is 1. Uh, so what you will notice here is that these two, 2 over 1 and 1 over 2, those are called reciprocals. <clears throat> And 3 fifths and 5 thirds, those are reciprocals. What we commonly have remembered to do is to just make it a fraction, and then its reciprocal is basically the flip or the inverse of the fraction. Um, what we're going to do is investigate graphs of reciprocal functions and notice some of the common things that are happening. In order to do that, the first thing I'm going to do is investigate with the table of values the function y is equal to x and its reciprocal which would be y is equal to 1 over x, because the reciprocal of x is 1 over x. So we're going to graph these functions. Uh, I'll always do the non-reciprocal function in blue and the reciprocal function in pink or red. Um, and we're going to investigate what that looks like and what some of the common characteristics between the reciprocal function and its non-reciprocal function are. I've already graphed the function y is equal to x. I've done the table of values here. So for inputs, which I've chosen of these values, the outputs are identical. So it's a straight line through 0 with a slope of 1, which shouldn't surprise us. Uh, as far as the reciprocal function goes, y is equal to 1 over x. If x is negative 10, then y is going to be negative 1 tenth. So if I have negative 10, y is going to be negative 1 tenth. So we can just approximate maybe right here. Uh, if we have x is equal to negative 5, y is going to be negative 1 fifth. So that's going to be roughly here. If x is equal to negative 2, it's going to be negative 1 half. Uh, so we have this point here. If x is equal to negative 1, the reciprocal of negative 1 is actually negative 1. So that's something that's unique, is that the reciprocal of negative 1 is itself. Uh, let's move on. The reciprocal of negative 1 half is negative 2, so that's going to be roughly here. Uh, negative 1 fifth is negative 5, so negative 1 fifth and negative 5 is roughly here. And negative 1 tenth, the reciprocal of negative 10, so that would be roughly down here. Here's another unique characteristic. The reciprocal of 0 actually does not exist because uh, 1 over 0 you cannot divide by 0 does not exist. And what we're going to see is that there's actually this invisible line through 0 that the reciprocal function cannot cross because that does not exist. That invisible line we'll call later a vertical asymptote. Uh, let's continue to move on. So the reciprocal of 1 tenth is 10. The reciprocal of 1 fifth is 5. Uh, so we'll move up to here, here, continue on. The reciprocal of 1 half is 2. Uh, here's a new <clears throat> Another unique trait, the reciprocal of 1 is itself. So here's uh, 1, 1 right here. The reciprocal of 2 is 1 half, of 5 is 1 fifths, and of 10 is 1 tenth. Uh, so this graph will look something like, and if I connect the dots, you'll see kind of a unique pattern. The reciprocal function of y equals x looks something like this. Uh, what we're going to do is investigate just some different patterns between non-reciprocal functions and the reciprocal functions. Uh, <clears throat> that's what I'm hoping for us to find out. You may want to watch this video or this lesson a few times uh, in order to figure out what those relationships are and to really understand it. Uh, because once you do understand it, you'll notice that the patterns are always uh, the same in a lot of cases. Uh, what we're going to do here is investigate the relationship between each non-reciprocal function and its related reciprocal function. Again, the non-reciprocal function will always be in blue, and the reciprocal function will always be in red. And we'll just look at a few of them. We'll look at reciprocals of linear functions and reciprocals of quadratic functions, and notice some common patterns. Uh, here's two of the patterns, or three of the patterns, that uh, we noticed already in the previous example. And you might even notice that what you're seeing here is quite a similar graph with some differences, obviously. Uh, what you will notice is that you will always want to graph the non-reciprocal function first. Uh, it's going to make it a lot easier. So the non-reciprocal function, x plus 2, looks like this. Slope intercept form, y intercept of 2, slope of 1. Um, a few of the characteristics that will always occur when you're graphing the reciprocal function. Uh, one of them is whenever the non-reciprocal function crosses the x-axis, which has a y value of 0 or an output of 0, uh, the reciprocal function will have what I ha made this invisible wall here that it never touches. 
also called the vertical asymptote, uh, because the reciprocal of any zeros does not exist. Uh, another few common things that are going to come up is that whenever the non-reciprocal function has a y value of 1, the reciprocal function will also have a y value of 1, because the reciprocal of 1 is 1. And also the reciprocal of negative 1, so any outputs of negative 1 on the non-reciprocal function will also have an output of negative 1 on the reciprocal function. So those are called invariant points. That's where the reciprocal function and the non-reciprocal function will always intersect. Uh, beyond that, what we can do is just notice as this non-reciprocal function gets closer to the x-axis or to the zeros, the non-reciprocal function gets further and further away, and that sh or the reciprocal function gets further and further away. Sorry, that shouldn't be a surprise to you because the reciprocal of really small numbers are really large numbers. Uh, and the inverse, or sorry, the reciprocal happens here. Uh, as this non-reciprocal function gets further and further away from the x-axis, or larger and larger, the reciprocal function gets smaller and smaller. I could even show you a specific example. Uh, the value of y here is 2. So it shouldn't surprise you that the reciprocal is 1 half. So that value of y there is 1 half. Uh, so you can always take the reciprocal of any output values, but that's the nature of it. Same thing down here. As these get closer and closer to the x-axis on the non-reciprocal function, the reciprocal function gets further and further away. And same thing here. As the non-reciprocal function goes further and further away from the x-axis, the reciprocal function goes closer and closer to the x-axis. Let's look at those patterns, and you'll get more and more familiar with them as we move on. Um, Right, in this next example, the non-reciprocal function is in slope-intercept form, or sorry, uh, yeah, slope-intercept form already with a slope of negative 2 and a y-intercept of 4. So that's been graphed. That's what you're always going to want to do is graph the non-reciprocal function and then move on there from there to notice the characteristics or implement the characteristics of the reciprocal function. Uh, same thing again. What we're noticing is that any x-intercepts of the non-reciprocal function represent a a vertical asymptote or a non-permissible value of the reciprocal function. Uh, another thing that we'll note is that any outputs of 1 or values of 1 on your non-reciprocal function represent intersects of your reciprocal function. Same thing with negative ones. Any value of negative 1 on your non-reciprocal function represents a value of negative 1 on your reciprocal function. Beyond that, again, as this non-reciprocal function gets closer and closer to the x-axis from the invariant point, which is what these two points are. Uh, your reciprocal function gets further and further away from the x-axis. And conversely, as the non-reciprocal function gets further and further away or larger and larger, your reciprocal function gets, sorry, closer and closer uh, to the x-axis. Same thing below the x-axis. As this gets further and further away from the x-axis, uh, this gets closer and closer to the x-axis. and the opposite happens here. Uh, let's move on to the reciprocal functions of quadratic functions. Uh, so here is the non-reciprocal function. It's an already in vertex form, so we've got a vertex of 3, negative 4, and it opens in the typical y is equal to x squared fashion. Uh, so that's the non-reciprocal function. And what we'll be noticing here again is the exact same thing. Common patterns. Any x-intercepts represent vertical asymptotes or non-permissible values of your reciprocal function. So you'll see that your reciprocal function is divided into three parts because there are two vertical asymptotes. Uh, let's notice some things here as far as the invariant points go. Here's a value of 1, so that's where the two intersect. Uh, and from there, what you'll notice is as this non-reciprocal function gets further and further away from the x-axis. This gets closer and closer to the x-axis. Same thing on this side. And then as it gets closer and closer to the x-intercept, the reciprocal moves further and further away. Uh, in this middle section here, you'll notice again the invariant points of negative 1 are intersects of the reciprocal function. So here and here. Uh, and then from there, what you may want to notice is look at the vertex. What's the y value of that vertex? It is negative 4. So it shouldn't surprise you uh, that the reciprocal of negative 4 oops, sorry, uh, the reciprocal of negative 4 is negative a quarter. So this point here would have a y value of negative a quarter. Okay, And from there what we can do is just notice uh, the common patterns. So this red graph here is the reciprocal of this non-reciprocal function. Let's look at one more and then really quickly I'll sketch a few more for you so you're getting used to the patterns. Uh, here's the non-reciprocal function. What? 
y is equal to or f of x equal to negative x squared minus 4x minus 3, and it's in blue here. As far as the red function goes, or sorry, the reciprocal function goes, notice the x-intercepts of the non-reciprocal function have now become, not surprisingly, vertical asymptotes of the reciprocal function. So these invisible walls that your reciprocal function uh, cannot cross. Uh, beyond that, let's look at the invariant points. This value of 1 is also a value of 1 on your reciprocal function, and as this non-reciprocal function gets closer and closer to the x intercepts the non or sorry the reciprocal function gets further and further away so that's that middle segment here uh, in the other two segments again you'll notice the invariant points of negative one also have intersects with the reciprocal function at negative one and from there uh, the common patterns should be noticed Okay, uh, I'm going to wrap this up pretty quickly here. We're going to do four more really quickly, uh, just so you get used to kind of some things that are happening here. All right, graph the, given the graph of the non-reciprocal function, graph the related reciprocal function. Uh, so this should happen or start happening pretty quickly. Uh, what we notice is that this x-intercept is going to be a vertical asymptote of the reciprocal function. So I'm graphing the reciprocal of these particular functions. Uh, we'll also notice that here are your invariant points. And from there, as this reciprocal, non-reciprocal function gets closer to the x-axis, the reciprocal function will get further and further away, and vice versa. Okay, and same thing in the negative uh, y values or negative outputs. So that's going to look like this. And this next one, again, if you notice, here is a or an x-intercept, so that's going to represent a vertical asymptote for your reciprocal function. Here are your invariant points. You'll notice that there's no invariant points below the x-axis. Uh, your reciprocal function won't exist below the x-axis at all in this case, uh, which is absolutely fine. So there's uh, one part of your reciprocal function, and here is the other part. Okay, uh, let's look at two more, and then we'll be done. Uh, same thing here. Again, just some common patterns that you'll be noticing. Uh, often, it will be the case that your uh, vertical asymptotes aren't at integer values, and that is absolutely fine. We'll look at it the next lesson more specifically. How do we find out the properties, the specific properties of reciprocal functions? So that's in the next lesson. Uh, but here we're just looking at invariant points, uh, vertical asymptotes, <clears throat> and basically the shape of a reciprocal function. It also won't surprise you again uh, that since this has a value of 3, uh, the point directly below it on the reciprocal function would have a value of one-third, which will be useful in the next lesson. Uh, and here's two more invariant points. So your reciprocal function would look something, it's a little bit hard to see, uh, would look something like that. And the last one, this is the most interesting in a way, you'll notice that there's no x-intercepts, which means that there's no non-permissible values of vertical asymptotes. You'll also notice that there's no invariant points. There's no values of one or negative one. So what you may want to do is just notice this, this has a value of 2. The reciprocal of 2 is a half. So your reciprocal function uh, will definitely have the point right here. And then as your non-reciprocal function gets further and further from the x-axis, your reciprocal function will get closer and closer to it, which is hard to see with this pen. Uh, but that's sort of what it would look like. Somewhat boring. All right, so just in summary, I know this has been a longer lesson. Uh, here is some key ideas, or are some key ideas. Some key ideas for graphing reciprocal functions. Uh, you're always going to want to graph the non-reciprocal function first. Always. Uh, secondly, a non-reciprocal function and its reciprocal function, they will always intersect, and these are uh, what I'm talking about, the invariant points, at the points x1 and x-1, because the reciprocal 1 and negative 1 are themselves. Uh, as I said, these are called invariant points. Uh, next, the x-intercepts of the non-reciprocal function represent the non-permissible values of the reciprocal function because you can't divide by zero. I represented that by those dotted vertical lines. These also represent, uh, as I've stated, the vertical asymptotes of the reciprocal function. As a reciprocal function moves farther away from the x-axis from the invariant point, sorry, non-reciprocal function moves further away from the x-axis, the reciprocal function moves closer to the x-axis. That's the reciprocal nature. Uh, as a non-reciprocal function moves closer to the x-axis from the invariant point, the reciprocal function moves farther from the x-axis. So that's, again, the nature of reciprocal functions.